Welcome again from School of Mechanical and Mechatronic Engineering UTS and we're back in the Vibration Lab. Uh, in this video I just want to explain something about the use of force transducers, particularly when they're used for impact hammers and for the purpose of exciting structures that we might like to do experimental model analysis on. Uh, previously I've talked about accelerometers, there's another video you can have a look at that. All of those um, tips and tricks with respect to cabling, uh, electrical integrity, looking after the transducer are valid here. Um, I've talked about signal conditioning, we also have a separate video on the use of an oscilloscope, although for this purpose setting up the oscilloscope is a little bit different, so I will spend some time on that. Um, it's essentially um, the same in terms of the cabling, which is, you know, we connect to the micro force hammer in the same way. Embedded within this end is uh, a force transducer, which is essentially an accelerometer without the mass on it, and so when we connect this and it's got signal conditioning which eventually catches up with the electronics you can see that as I impact the structure we get might not come across properly in this video because they're very quick and I'll show it in more detail in a moment, it depends on the frame rate, we get little impulses I can increase the mass of the hammer by adding the head expander, what they call a head expander to the back of it Okay, and I would connect that, for example, with some beeswax or some double-sided sticky tape. Please don't glue it on. That gives me a bit more mass if I want to be able to excite a larger structure. This is for very delicate structures. We have even smaller hammers than this. For intermediate type structures, we have a hammer like this, um, which obviously you can see we've got a bigger handle, and we can use that for impacting and things in this sort of uh, regime of, 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 of impact. There could also be an a head expander attached to the back for more mass on here. Something else that's important to know about, force about impact hammers is that we have different tip stiffnesses okay, that we can use. So here's an example of a titanium tip, which is a very stiff tip. This is a silicon tip, which is much less stiff. There's a nylon tip here, which is somewhere in between, and an aluminium tip. Okay, so we have four different tips of increasing stiffness from silicon to nylon to aluminium to titanium. And the increasing of the tip stiffness reduces the duration of the impact. Reducing of the duration of the impact increases the excitation frequency bandwidth. So for stiffer structures, we need to choose a harder tip so we reduce the duration of the impact and excite the structure over a wider frequency range and vice versa. The stiffness of the sample itself also has an impact obviously on the duration of the impact. Um, so you have to bear both of those things into consideration when choosing the correct tip stiffness. This transducer doesn't have a, this uh, force transducer doesn't have, impact hammer doesn't have a different tip stiffness that we can select, so we, we just have the one that we can get. With an oscilloscope, you must remember to DC couple the input channel, and we also have, obviously have to set the time duration uh, accordingly and triggering needs to be set up, so I've got a trigger level set over here that's going to observe the rising edge of the impact and start the acquisition and collect a, a very nice impulsive waveform. So rather than running continuously, I'll just go to a single shot mode and then I can strike the structure and you can see I immediately get a very nice impulse, albeit I've got slightly too many volts and the beauty of an oscilloscope is that we can control how we show that and we can obviously also move that around on the screen and the trigger goes with it. So if I hit that again, again you can see another impact. If I strike it harder, just need to go back. Sometimes it's a little bit sluggish, doesn't want to. Trigger's not been set properly, maybe it's because I've adjusted this one right, okay. There we go. Okay, so because I moved that down, the trigger threshold needed to be changed. There's my impact. Okay, I can switch to the second channel on the scope, and this is now, now I need to change my triggering. Uh, rather than source one, I've changed to source two. Um, <clears throat> okay, and turn off channel one, don't need it. Channel two should be running. Okay, um, softer tip, so when we make a measurement you should see a much longer duration impulse. So if I set the, you can see I can change the time and waveform, okay, I didn't catch all of it because the scope wasn't set up correctly, there you go. So now this time across this, this 
impulse is much longer than it was. I've changed the time base over here. I've also adjusted the force level here. Heavier hammer, more force, softer tip, longer duration. Okay. We can use these devices to do experimental mode analysis and we'll do that normally using the Siemens acquisition system such as this device over here which has a software suite built into it that has a lot of user, um, a, a specific user interface that allows us to get good quality impacts with nice clean impulse durations, no double impacts and we'll talk about that in a future video. Thank you.